Hi there! Welcome to 90% Knitting. This is episode 327. I'm Lisa, also known as Fiber Nymph. And today is Wednesday, November 27th, I believe is the 27th. Um, oh, it's the 27th and it's episode 327. And the number 327 was the phone exchange at the house where I grew up. 327. 327-5578. That was my phone number when I was growing up. I'm sure somebody probably even has that number now. <laughs> I have not lived in that house for over like almost 30 years, I guess, at this point. And I still remember the phone number. I remember weird numbers. Do you remember weird numbers? Yeah. Okay. We won't go down that path. Anyway. <laughs> um, so, yes. 327 Wednesday oh I know what it's gonna say it's Thanksgiving Eve if you're not in the US that means nothing to you unless you're an expat in Finland or Australia or somewhere then you know it's also Thanksgiving Eve for you but for the rest of the world nobody else is celebrating Thanksgiving tomorrow I think Canada does Thanksgiving in October I want to say October and I know other countries probably have Thanksgivings but tomorrow's ours which means Today is probably celebrated mostly by cooking. I will be baking a pumpkin pie later. I can sense and smell in my brain the pumpkin pie vibes from around the country, around the world, wherever you are. If you're baking a pumpkin pie, I will be with you momentarily. Well, not momentarily. We're not, this isn't a cooking show. I'm not going to bake my pumpkin pie on the podcast. So I have pumpkin pie to make and I have stuffing to mix. I always mix my stuffing the night before so that all the flavors can kind of meld together overnight and then I stuff it into the bird right before I start cooking it in the morning. I don't stuff the bird ahead of time. We only have a little tiny bird this year. It's like a 12 pound bird because it's just Bill and I this year. Nobody else will be here, which is fine because that means he will spend most of the day putzing around in the basement or the garage and doing his thing until it's dinner time and I will have the day to do my thing, which my thing in this case is going to be finally getting our Christmas tree up. I know, I said I was gonna do that last weekend, but that did not happen. So tomorrow is my day. I am going to decorate for Christmas on Thanksgiving, which seems a little odd. I actually misspoke. If I said last year that I've never put my Christmas decorations up before Thanksgiving before that was a lie I forgot a couple of years ago my mom and her husband were up for Thanksgiving and since we weren't going to be seeing them at Christmas I wanted the Christmas decorations to be up because we kind of did Christmas with them up here that year um, at Thanksgiving so I did have the tree and everything up early that year but the, I think this this would be the second time I've ever done that whatever it doesn't really matter it's all kind of relative like when you have your relatives in town and you want to have your tree up it's a relative thing <laughs> oh whatever do what makes you happy why am i yelling at you <laughs> let's get going with the content okay I'm gonna try to make this episode shorter than last week i'm sorry it went over an hour this has been I, like i'm so frustrated with myself. I've just got so much to tell you and I've got to learn how to pare things down. And maybe if I didn't spend the first three minutes and 53 seconds just babbling, that would help. All right, let's get into the knitting. Oh wait, up front, I just want to let you know, because if you don't usually watch till the end to the shop news, things you might be interested in knowing. I'm going to be talking about a sale that I'll be doing this weekend. Every year I do a Thanksgiving weekend sale, so Friday through Monday there's going to be a sale. I'm going to talk about that during the shop news segment. Um, I've got some giveaways going on right now, which I'll just tell you right now. I'm doing a giveaway a day all week this week on the Fiber Nymph Dye Works Instagram feed. So that is happening. Um, the new one is going up every afternoon. So I drew one winner for the Monday one already. Today I'll draw the Tuesday winner and I'll be posting today's and then I'll have one for Thursday and Friday. So five giveaways on Instagram in the at Fiber Nymph Dye Works account. So check that out. That's really all I have to tell you about that. So I probably won't mention it again. Um, and I also just wanted to let you know about my upcoming recording schedule. Um, and I figured this would be a good place to pop that in. 
because December's coming up and December's going to be weird. <laughs> uh, well, it's gonna, not going to be weird. It's just going to be busy. I'm, I don't know that I'm going to record super regular episodes in December. I will be recording a regular episode next week, though, because I will have the November um, prize winners for monthly makes to announce. So I'll definitely record next week. And I'm going to have another prize to announce because I have a giveaway that I'm going to tell you about also later on in the episode. Um, but after that, I may not be doing another regular episode until possibly like the very end of the month. I don't know. I have special episodes that I want to do though. I'm not doing, what's it called? Vlogmas. I'm not doing Vlogmas this year. That is just not happening. I enjoy watching other people's, but that was a lot of work. Plus my mom is going to be up here again in December and that always makes things weird towards the end so and I always fall off so no vlogmas but I will be doing some special episodes um, throughout the month of December because I've got a bunch of them that I want to do I think I did that like two years ago maybe so okay that's my upfront announcements now we're gonna get into the regular content of the podcast FOs I've got FOs to show you well, I've got one FO and then a couple of half finished objects. And my friend here has been finished. I'm going to talk to you about that one. You've seen that one already. It's just sitting there waiting its turn. <laughs> okay. So the mitts that I've been working on, which are going to be a pattern that I'm going to write up. I don't think, were these, I think both of these might have been done last week. I honestly can't remember at this point because I haven't been doing show notes on my computer. I've just been writing them up on slips of paper and then they disappear. Anyway, this was the first set of mitts that I did, which you have seen at least one of before. And I'm just basically calling these slouchy mitts right now. That's my working name for them. Um, they are sport weight mitts. And this set was knit out of my Serenity 2.0 base, which I don't carry anymore. It's not available to me. It was a merino bamboo blend and I loved it. Um, but I had it in my stash and this is the Marion Bright colorway. I will say I have Marion Bright in the shop now, but it's obviously not on this base since I don't have this anymore. But this particular skein, when I dyed it, it I either... I think I must have dyed this wrong and this might have been why I kept it. Because this brown stripe actually is a bit darker dyed according to the reg that real recipe for this colorway that I have. Um, so the skeins that are in the shop, they look like this. They have all three of these colors, but this brown stripe will be a noticeably darker in the ones that are in the shop. Just so you know, in case you're looking and you're like, that doesn't look like that. You're right. It doesn't. It could also just be because there's bamboo in this yarn and that sort of mutes things a little bit but I do think maybe it was the formulation of the dye that I used when I dyed up this this skein of yarn anyway um Mary and Bright and these are knit on US 1.5 needles and I loved how these turned out but since I don't carry this base anymore I wanted to knit them up on a base that I do carry and my current sport weight base is my traveler base which is an 8020 superwash merino and nylon and so I did finish the first mitt out of that. And this is my, that's not even a word colorway, which is my um, Scrabble colorway <laughs> from my game night series. So I do have the first mitt of this done. And again, I don't remember where this was last time or if it was finished or not, um, but it's done. And I measured and it, it works out the same. I was glad to see that. Same needles, um, my gauge was spot on, so that's always exciting. And I mean, you can even see them here. They look, well, if I line them up nicely, <laughs> they line up. So everything worked out great there. So I know I can use this with the same numbers that I started with. But then I had another idea because I always have ideas. And I decided to give this a try on a third uh, yarn, actually a third set of yarn. Oh, look at this. Oh my gosh, these are so warm and fuzzy. For this one, I held my sunshine base, which is a light fingering weight, together with a strand of fluff, which is my mohair silk blend. 
and I did the same thing, same stitch count, used the 1.5 needles, I got the same gauge. So when I write the pattern up, you're going to have the option um, in the pattern to either just use the Traveler on its own, or if you want something a little more fluffy and luxurious, you could do this. And I will probably at some point put kits together because you obviously are not going to need a full skein of either of these yarns. Um, but I have not yet done the math to figure out how much you need. So um, stay tuned for all that. The bottom line is um, I have now done at least, well, I've done four mitts. So I know my numbers are good for this size. I need to do all of the math to size it down one and up one because I'd like to have a range of sizes available in the pattern. So that's going to be next on my agenda as far as this particular project. After I do that and after I get it written up, I want to get the pattern tech edited and I will then be looking for test knitters. I'm not sure how soon that will be. Um, I will probably put the call out on Instagram unless I hear from enough of you from the podcast who say, I'd like to test knit. Um, but just know that I will be looking for people to test knit in the three different sizes um, as well as I would love to have at least one or two people do this um, sunshine and fluff combination as well. Not just, I mean, somebody to do this instead of just everybody doing the sport weight or vice versa. I'd like a nice mix. <laughs> so that's where that is. My hope is to be able to have this all finished and ready to publish by sometimes in January, like even late January, because it's still cold and that's still, you know, fluffy mitt time. These are so warm. And I'll tell you what though, as I was knitting this one, like I was about here and I'm like, oh, this is so pretty. This kind of looks like the cuff of a sweater. And it made me think of, what sweater is it? Is it the no frills sweater? The one that you hold the fluff, the mohair silk with another yarn to make? I think that's what it is that a lot of people have made. Um, I thought, oh, I, I can understand why you'd want to wear this, but I'll tell you what, this is crazy warm. I don't think I could wear, I mean, I guess I could wear that kind of a warm sweater. I'm, I'm putting it up here. Like, would I want to have this all over my body? Like this doesn't bother me. This is so soft, the mohair. I just, I don't know if I could deal with how, I mean, I wear Icelandic wool sweaters and I don't have a problem, but this just feels like it would be really, really warm. It would be great though. I mean, it would be so comfortable. I don't know. I, I, it's fingering weight sweater though. Well, I guess essentially it's sort of a sport weight sweater once you've held the two yarns together. I don't know. Oh, the color, by the way, on this, this is, um, my, it's a new color. I've been using it in some of my self stripings and it is going to make a debut later in December on its own. Um, winter red. It's funny cause it looks very different there than just in the two skeins. This is what it looks like on sunshine, which is now, oh, <laughs> this strand of mohair is sitting on top. That's why it looks fuzzy. And that's actually looking much brighter on camera than it really is in person. It's a much, it's a sadder red. <laughs> I don't mean sad in like, boy, is that a pathetic looking color? No, it's just, it's a darker, the color is saddened by some other colors that are in it. So that's what it looks like by itself on the sunshine. And then this is what it looks like by itself on the mohair silk. So, and as you can see, that one mitt took very little yarn. That's why I'll probably put kits together for that since nobody needs full skeins just to make a pair of mitts. So, all right. So those are the mitts. Stay tuned for more information about those. But again, it's going to be a little while before those are ready to be test knit. Okay. Uh, next up, we've got whips, which I guess technically some of those mitts were whips. Um, yeah, I already talked about the mitts. Let's go to the other things that I've talked about in the past. I told you I'm working on a hat for my daughter that I was just sort of winging <laughs> the pattern and making up it as, as I went along. And then I realized, you know what? I'm not feeling this and I'm not quite sure what to do because I threw bobbles in and everything. So I've rethought that. And I found a pattern 
today actually that I think I'm going to make for her instead. It's called the Delicate Grace Hat by Lena Matheson. And here's a picture of it. It's not a great picture in the pattern, but you can see it's got little eyelets up here and some twisted sort of cabling in the ribbing. It's really pretty, which actually I had been doing that in the hat that I had started anyway. I think what I'm going to do, this is actually written for fingering weight yarn. I'm going to do it in the same combination of the sunshine and the mohair silk, which will make it more of a heavier yarn. It won't be a fingering weight, but I'll just do it in a smaller size because this hat's written for five different sizes. So I'm going to size down in the hat and I'm going to use that yarn combination because I think that would look so pretty. I realize that the fuzziness of the mohair will probably obscure like the little eyelet details and stuff, but I still think it'll be super pretty and it's got just a little bit of slouch to it. Um, so I think that's my plan. I think that's what I'm going to do. And I should have plenty of yarn to do the hat using that yarn and still have enough to do my second mitt too. So fingers crossed that works out. But again, that's the Delicate Grace hat by Lena Matheson. So the hat that I already started, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I may just rip it out completely or I may leave it sit and think about it and it might turn into a design at some point. I don't know. But that's the plan for my daughter's hat. Um, the hat for, oh, the other work in progress, that's technically not a work in progress since I'm not even using the one that started, but okay. Um, remember I said about my hipster shawl? To, oh yeah, I did bring it in. So I'd started the hipster shawl by Hohi Locatelli a while back using some Feederbrook Farms yarn, um, the Entropy yarn. So this is as far as I had gotten. And then I messed up this section after these crossed over stitches. It's like a dropped stitch, open crossover stitchy thing. I messed up this section here because it's sort of a patterning stitch. I goofed it up and I got frustrated and my stitch count was off. And finally I had decided, oh, it's brightened up, but it's also started to rain all at the same time. That's kind of weird. <laughs> Excuse me. Anyway, I. I had even marked it as frogged in Ravelry on my uh, Ravelry project page, but I hadn't physically frogged it. So last night when I went in the bedroom before I was going to bed, I was going to sit in there and knit, but I didn't really feel like knitting on anything that I had on hand. So I thought, well, maybe I'll frog this instead. I pulled it out of the bag and I thought, you know what, maybe I won't frog it. Maybe because I had already ripped back. I had ripped back, I'd forgotten I'd done that. I'd ripped back to about here. And I mean, you can kind of see it. I don't know, maybe how much you can see. This is the right side though. Um, I don't know, it looks a little odd. There's like one, one row where I think the patterning is still sort of in there, but I don't care. What I've decided to do is I'm not going to frog this. I'm going to continue it. But instead of doing the patterning in between these sections, I'm just going to do garter stitch. And then when I come to these sections, I will do these dropped stitch crossover bits. And that will make it mostly a mindless knit, which is a happy thing. <laughs> and I'll still be able to use this yarn and I'll still be able to get this part, which is what I really liked about this pattern is these fun crossover open sections. And I'll be able to do the tassels on the outside which is also the fun part, and use this yarn because this yarn is so pretty. So I have three different colors of the yarn. This is the first one. This is the second one. And then this is the last one. So they're going to go in that succession. And I am going to fade them in as I go. There won't be hard breaks. Um, but that's the plan. So I was glad. I felt good about that decision. So that's no longer frogged. It's been changed. Its status has changed in my Ravelry um, project pages. And uh, here's my, I, I think I spilled coffee on this at one point. It's got kind of a stain. I'll show you this. My camping wild animals bag from Bags by Awesome Granny. Okay, so that is a work in progress. Some projects that are coming up yet though. Let's talk about the hat that I went and knit for my husband that I talked to you about last time. I had a lot of people write to me and give me ideas 
for things that I could do and how I could manage to make this nice warm double layer hat. And I appreciate all of your input. Thank you so much for that. That was very helpful. And the one idea that I'm sort of gravitating towards and hadn't really thought about is instead of doing it the way I described doing it last week, which I described so poorly, <laughs> someone mentioned about doing it um, starting up at the top of the hat, you know, so like up here with a tiny little circular cast on and then working down and then when you get to the length you want, you do a purl round and then you work down the other way for the lining, but you'll be knitting it um, or the outside of the hat, whichever one you want it to be. You'll be knitting it normally like you would knit a hat. Um, and then you just pop the one inside the other and that purl ridge acts as a turning round. And that makes perfect sense. And I think that is probably what I'm gonna do. That's what I'm leaning on. Although the other thing I had the thought, I could do a double knit hat. So I got on Ravelry and I started looking at all the double knit patterns. I have never done double knitting. I mean, I've played with double knitting just to try it out, but I've never actually done a double knit project. And I think they're so cool. Um, I'm just not sure I want to put that kind of pressure on myself for a Christmas gift at this point. I would like it to to keep it easy <laughs> at this point. So I might do a double knit hat at some point in the future, but probably not now. I think I'm gonna do that other one that was recommended to me. So thank you. I totally am blanking on who that was that recommended it, but you know who you are and I do appreciate the comment and giving me the idea. So that's that project. Other gift projects. <laughs> I know I said I wasn't gonna do much gift knitting and I'm really not, um, but I'm doing some. I told you that my son had requested um, like convertible fingerless gloves. I've been kind of like keeping that. I know I have to do them. He's obviously not getting them for his birthday because his birthday is on Monday. <laughs> so they'll definitely be a Christmas gift, but I've, I keep looking at patterns on Ravelry and I have found a couple. I'm doing worsted weight. I am not doing fingering weight. And I, I think I've narrowed it down to a couple different patterns that I could choose from. My biggest question now is yarn. He wanted black. I said no. <laughs> so he's like, well, how about really dark gray? I'm like, okay. I may end up just dyeing some yarn. I mean, I've got plenty of gray alternatives in my dye my dye uh, lineup. So I could definitely dye my own. Um, I was really hoping to find just sort of a super washed heather kind of yarn. Um, I thought about like, I know Barocco, what do they, Remix? Is that? I don't even know if that's worsted weight. But I, I keep thinking that maybe that looks a little heathery, but I also think that has other fibers in it, doesn't it? It has like, it's not necessarily all wool. And I'd kind of like it to be wool because I want them to be warm for him. So that might not be the best the best one. They need to be super wash um, because they're for him and he's hard on stuff. So they definitely need to be super wash. Um, I don't know. If you have any good yarn ideas for kind of a heather, I don't want to do tweed. I want to do heather, a heathered yarn. Um, let me know what you think. If you have any ideas, because I could conceivably still order yarn if I had to. I'd love to not order yarn and just use either something that's in my stash or that I can dye myself, but I'm not against ordering yarn if I have to. So let me know what you think. Um, what else? Oh, and I'm gonna make some dishcloths for my mom. My mom loves hand, -knit, hand knit dishcloths, so I figure I could whip up a couple of those pretty easily. Although, remember I wove that big long strip of cotton for dishcloths earlier this year, and I've not cut those up yet and like hemmed them. So I may end up giving her a couple of those too if I can manage to get that accomplished before Christmas. So that could happen. So those are things that are coming up. Those are kind of on deck sort of things that I know I definitely need to do. And none of them are particularly difficult except those, those convertible mitts are gonna be a pain in the butt, I know, but they're probably not gonna be as big a pain as I'm imagining them to be. That's usually the way that happens. Um, 
otherwise things coming up that I want to work on well you know December 1st is coming so my ad my fibery advent bat calendar that I bought from knit spin farm I'll be starting to spin that which will be fun I think I'm gonna spin that on my sidekick um, so that I can well I don't necessarily have to spin the singles on my side I am going to just do them end to end though that's my plan so that I can then do a chain ply and have a big long um, long color change skein of yarn in the end that's my plan for that so hopefully I'll be able to keep up with that throughout December um, and then for my well it's hanging up here and it's out of the shot but you saw it last week my yarn advent calendar um, from Sweet Sparrow Yarns. I want, I'm gonna work on that every day as well. My thought at this point, I don't know. I kind of would like to just do a shawl with it and just do, you know, each day, one after the other. But I don't know that I wanna do, I could just do one of my, my default plain vanilla kind of elongated triangle shawls that I like to do. Um, I know there's a whole lot of Advent um, projects out there, but I find it really difficult to, to plan those just because you don't know what the yarn's gonna be. Now like when I was doing my own yarn, that's different because I know what the yarn is. Or like last year when I did that scarf, I had picked out all my same yarns. Um, I don't know, but I am, I, I'm gonna do like a shawl or a scarf or some sort of wrap, something like that with these minis. I could do a tube cowl, that would be fun. I've always, I've wanted to do one of those for a long time and I've never done one. Maybe that's what I'll do with them. That's a possibility. Cause I'd like it to be something that I can wear. Um, yeah, just, we'll put a pin in that idea. Maybe I'll do a tube cowl. Um, okay, speaking of spinning, we're going to move on to spinning now. I Just this morning, I finished my third bobbin for this yarn that I'm going to do a traditional three-ply with. So here are the yarns. So the fiber, this was some Falkland that I had dyed for the Barber Pole Fiber Club that I did back in 2017. And this was July's shipment. So... The um, blue, let's see, is called Racing the Dusk. No, no, no. I'm wrong. <laughs> this is Racing the Dusk. This is actually variegated, and it's not coming across now that it's spun. Well, it is, but not in this light so much. It's a very muted variegated, but this was the variegated. So this was called Racing the Dusk, and then the blue is Encroaching Night. So what I did was um, there were three ounces of the two colors. I spun two ounces here and two ounces here and then that other ounce I broke up into short little strips and I alternated. So in the end I'm gonna have a barber pulled yarn um, with these three colors. I did not divide the fiber super evenly like that middle skein here has more on it than these other two. <laughs> but hopefully it'll be decent. I don't know. Again, this is going to be a skein of yarn I'm giving a friend as a gift, hopefully, depending on what the final yarn looks like. <laughs> we'll see. If I like it and I think it looks acceptable, I will give it away as a gift. If not, I may keep it and I don't know what I'll give that person as a gift. We'll see. But that's my spinning. So it just needs to be plied. Um, I don't anticipate having a whole lot of spinning time over the holiday weekend because I when my husband's home I usually knit more than I spin like I'll sit out at the dining room table with him and knit or whatever but I don't usually come in here and get a lot of spinning time but maybe tomorrow like after I get the tree up and everything I might have some time so maybe I can do that plying then we'll see okay let's move on I have a giveaway that we're gonna do I'm rehanging my notes up here, sorry. On paper again this week, I'm just in a paper mode, sorry. I don't know why I'm apologizing, that's nothing to apologize for. Okay, a giveaway. So now this comes to my friend here. I showed you this hat a while ago, a couple podcasts ago. This was a test knit that I did for Sarah Jordan, who's PA Knitwit of Knitwit Designs. And this is the hat, it's called 
Hakova Shali. I hope I got it right this time. I asked her to please send me the phonetics for it so I would pron uh, pronounce it correctly. Anyway, she published it, I think, two days ago. I don't think it was, maybe it was just yesterday now. I don't know. Published this week. So it is out there and it's so much fun. And I just want everybody to go and knit it. It's amazing. And I love this top. That is the cleverest decreases on this hat. This is a brioche knit. If you've never done brioche before, this would be an excellent first project, I think. It's very simple because brioche in the round is pretty easy. It's a single strand, it's not a double color, so you're only working with one color. Um, yeah, it was a lot of fun. And the stripey, I just loved it on the stripes. Um, the hat that she did that's on her project, or on the pattern page, was also knit out of my yarn. The, um, the colorway she did hers in was Cold Snap. This is Fabulous Fruits. Um, what else can I tell you? Fingering weight. I think it looks phenomenal in the self-striping. And I love how it does that kind of tilt thing, the brioche skews like that. Um, I don't know. Just super fun and very squishy because brioche is squishy. Um, anyway, Sarah was gracious enough to do a giveaway for the pattern. So we're going to give away a copy of her new pattern. And I am going to pair the pattern up with a skein of self-striping fingering weight yarn. So whoever wins will not only get the pattern gifted to them by Sarah, but they will get to choose a skein of self-striping from my shop. Um, which hopefully there will be some in stock because I'm going to be doing the sale this weekend. I doubt that it will all sell out. Anyway, we'll hook you up with a skein of yarn. Let's put it that way. Um, your choice. So that's going to be the drawing. I will be putting a thread up in the Ravelry group, in the Fiber Nymph Dye Works group. So please um, check there. I'm going to have to put the prompt somewhere else as well. There will be a prompt in the Ravelry group. I know not everybody uses Ravelry these days, which I know is, it's inconceivable to me because I want Ravelry a lot, but I know not everybody is. So I'll tell you what, here's what we'll do. <laughs> Leave a comment in the Ravelry group or in the comments here for the video and I will aggregate those. Um, I will have the number of comments from Ravelry be one through whatever, and then however many comments are in the, uh, the comment thread here on the video will be line, I will add those to the ones after the ones in the Ravelry thread. Does that make sense? But please only enter one place, either in the Ravelry thread or here in the comments on YouTube. Please don't enter both places. Um, anyway, I will draw a winner for that, for the hat pattern and a skein of yarn uh, for next week, next week's video. Hey guys, it's future Lisa. I'm sitting here rather late on Wednesday evening processing the, or editing the podcast. And I just realized I did not give you a prompt for entering the hat drawing if you're going to enter by leaving a comment on YouTube. So um, I want to tell you what the prompt will be. The prompt will be please tell me your favorite holiday cookie. If you have a ho favorite holiday cookie or just a favorite cookie in general I guess um, since the name of the hat is related to a favorite holiday cookie memory from Sarah. Um, yeah, that'll be the prompt. So tell me your favorite holiday cookie. That'll be the prompt both places, both on YouTube and in Ravelry. But again, please just enter once, one place or the other. Um, anyway, that's all I needed to tell you. Thanks. Bye. Okay. Um, I have a couple new things to show you. I hadn't intended to have new things, but, you know. Instagram and that. I have two things of yarn. And the first one, I'm sorry, there's going to be a little crinkling here. Both of these are yarns from companies that I've not gotten yarn from before, so it's sort of exciting. 
The first one is some Dragon Horde yarn. It was Tristan. And um, isn't that pretty? It's called Good Luck Black Cat. So this was sort of one of her Halloween-y kind of colorways, I guess. At least I'm assuming. Maybe it wasn't, but it looks Halloween-y to me. I just thought it was so pretty. And up until this current batch of cats that we have in Babette, actually, all the cats I've... No, that's not true. I did have one other cat that was not black. Almost all the cats I've ever had as pets in my life have been black cats. Um, and now... We've got lots of cats. No black cats, actually. But anyway, I just have a special place in my heart for black cat, kitty cats. So I had to get this. So this is on her Myth Fingering Weight, which is a uh, merino nylon blend, 75-25. And came with the little extra skein of this dark gray. So, ooh, there's a big hawk up in the sky. Okay, so that's my one new thing. And then my other new thing, this was just too much fun and I couldn't not buy it. Um, this is from Hip Strings, which I've vended with Hip Strings before, but I've never ended up getting any of their yarn or fiber, which is just really bizarre. Um, this is a DK weight yarn. Does she have a base? Gifted. It's the Gifted Base which is a superwash merino wool, three-ply, and the colorway is called Sinkhole. Now, this is really a Pittsburgh-based reference. Not so long ago, within the last couple of months, it, there was a sinkhole that opened up in a street in Pittsburgh and basically swallowed a Pat bus. <laughs> the bus was this blue color. I'll try to see if I can find a picture. I can find a picture online. I'll try to remember to put it in here. This is an ode to the sinkhole that swallowed the Pat bus, and I just thought it was so much fun. And it, I love Pittsburgh-based colorways. Um, I like doing them. I've done some in the past, too. But anyway, I just thought this one was too much fun. So I have my own sinkhole yarn. I don't know what it'll become. Like I said, it's DK, so it could make a lovely fun hat or a cowl or something, or maybe some mitts. Who knows? But yeah, I got sinkhole. So anyway, those are my two new things. Um, let's see. Oh, no, actually, I have one other new thing, but it's totally not at all knitting related or yarn related, but I wanted to show it to you because it's really cute. I bought my calendar that I'm going to hang up in the yarn room for myself for next year, my 2020 calendar. It's the Sandra Boynton's Every Day is a Fabulous Holiday Calendar. <laughs> I love Sandra Boynton. Um, she does those board books for kids, which I had for my kids when they were little, and I buy them for gifts for people a lot, for baby gifts, because I just think her drawings are so adorable. Um, and when she, I follow her like on Facebook and Instagram and stuff like that. So when she said that this was coming out, I ordered it pretty immediately. And it's just 300, I guess next year must be a leap year. I didn't know that. But 366 offbeat, honest to goodness, official holidays. And um, with all of her superly cute. Okay, where's February? Yep, 29 days this February. But anyway, you know, every day has a holiday associated with it. And she's got little drawings. And <laughs> to dance is to live for February 7th, which is Ballet Day. And February 15th is Hippo Day. <laughs> kind of reminded me of um, Joanna Springs Club, because she does a yarn club, I think, based on weird, obscure holidays. So that's kind of cool, but anyway. That was my other new thing. I think those are still available. I think I got mine on Amazon. I'm sure you can still find it if you want one. So anyway, let's move on. Um, real quick, I'm going to mention this. I'm going to talk about it more in one of the extra, the special episodes I'm going to do in December, but I wanted to bring it up here just because I've mentioned in past episodes that we're not doing any more knit alongs this year. Um, but I do, I have decided on one that we're going to do next year and it's going to be a year long knit along. And this is 
we're, this has nothing to do with monthly makes. We are also going to do monthly makes next year again, or I'm going to offer monthly makes, monthly makes program. That's not really so much a knit along, although you are knitling, knitting along with it or crafting along with it. But this is completely separate. This is just for the podcast, not related to Fabric Nymph Dye Works. I decided, <coughs> I've been, for me, I wanted to do a 20 in 20 kind of thing for myself next year. And I'm going to actually do two different ones. I'm going to do 20 in 20 that will be yarn related, which means I'm going to do 20 projects using yarn from my stash that I already own. So I'm, you know, it's my ever present quest to use stash yarn basically. So that's how I'm going to do that for next year. So that's going to be 20 for 20, 20 in 20 of stash yarn for myself. But I'm also going to do a 20 in 20 for patterns that I already own. Because as I was looking in my queue for these mitts patterns and oh my gosh, there are so many giant birds outside. <laughs> is getting a little freaky there's like oh there was that hawk there's huge crows they may be vultures like turkey vultures i don't know huge blackbirds and then there's crows or ravens one or the other i don't know there's just a whole lot of birds flying around out in my yard right now okay that has nothing to do with what i'm talking about patterns i have a ton of patterns i mean i have a lot of books you know and magazines like you know um the really nice magazines that you can get through the woolly thistle um lynn and gosh i'm totally blanking on the other ones but i own them like the shetland um shetland week annual book and stuff like that i've got a lot of those but plus i've just got hundreds of patterns that i purchased and they're in my ravelry library and i i've made some of them but the vast majority of them have not been made so Especially, I'm thinking about this especially because right now is the Gift Along 2019 on Ravelry. If you aren't familiar with that, there's a group called Gift Along. At least I think that's what it's called. Did I write it down? Gift Along 2019. Actually, that's how I found that hat pattern that I bought that I'm going to make for my daughter. I found that through the Gift Along. Um, but right now, I think for a week or so, the designers that are participating in the Gift Along 2019 um, are offering a bundle of patterns and they are offered at a coupon code gift along 2019 coupon code for 25% off the patterns that are in their gift along bundle only um, a lot of the designers have many more patterns out there but they have a bundle put together for this specific project so every year I get sucked into this patterns and I've got I don't know how many patterns sitting in my Ravelry cart right now I need to go through and weed them out. I don't need to buy all those patterns. But, you know, it's a fun way to get some new patterns. But that being said, like, I don't need a whole lot of new patterns in my life because I've got so many. So next year, I'm going to do my best to knit at least 20 patterns that I already own as of the first of the year. Um, and I'm also going to try to knit at least 20 projects with stash yarn. Some of those might cross over. I might knit patterns that I already own with some stash yarn. That would be awesome. But anyway, since I'm doing that for me, I thought it would be a fun thing to offer for everybody to do. So kind of like I did whip extravaganza this year, that was sort of a self-serving thing to begin with because I was knitting down my whips, which my how my whips turned out for this year, I'm going to do a special episode on that too. So you can tune into that, which is probably the same one that I'll talk about this 20 and 20 in. Um, anyway, so for you can do either one. You can either do 20 and 20 for yarn from your stash, or you could do 20 and 20 for patterns that you already own, or you could also do both. It's totally up to you. You will need to declare those things, though, prior to January 1st. And I will be putting a thread up in the Ravelry group sometime in December with all those details. And, of course, I'll be talking about it in that video. Um, so that's how I'm going to do that. I'm going to, I think I'm going to limit it to quarterly prizes from the chatter thread that will be there. And then for anybody who succeeds in meeting their, their self challenge of that 20 and 20, um, I'll have some sort of prize. I don't know what it will be yet, but I will have some sort of special prize for you. I don't know. 
that part I haven't figured out yet. But just so you know, that's coming up and I wanted you to know about it so that you can maybe plan and like look through your stash or think about it or look at your patterns. Um, yeah, more details to come. <laughs> um, let's see, December episodes. Like I said, I am going to do, I'm not doing Vlogmas or Vlogmas. <laughs> I'm not doing Vlogmas either. Is there Vlogmas? There probably is. But I am going to do some special episodes. I thought I might do one on like the books that I've read this year or listened to because I mainly listen to audiobooks. Would you be interested in that? Because it's something that I haven't talked a lot about in 10% this year. Just again, because of time, I haven't had time to put all that in. So I might do an episode about the books that I've read this year. Um, I thought maybe I would do an episode that was like favorites, like some of my favorite things that I've been enjoying this year. That could be both yarn fiber knitting related and other things. So I might do one of those. Do you have any ideas for episodes you'd like me to do in December, like special episodes that I could do? I mean, I could always do a and a episode too, if there's enough cues. <laughs> um, I've done those in the past. Sometimes people ask questions, sometimes they don't. If there's not enough questions, it's not really worth me doing. But if y'all have questions, I'd be happy to. Oh my gosh. Okay, so now <laughs> there are these two woodpeckers, hairy woodpeckers. They, they love hanging out in this one tree and they fly from that tree over here to our suet feeder on the deck. But they're out there in that tree chasing each other around a branch. The birds are going crazy today. This is so weird. <laughs> okay, so give me ideas. If you have ideas for some sort of episode you would like me to do, please let me know and I will consider it. Um, it was funny on the, um, oh, which thread is it? I guess it's probably the Monthly Makes Chatter thread. Somebody mentioned I should do a bloopers episode because I do have weird bloopery things occasionally. I probably won't do one of those just because I don't keep track of my bloopers and it would take me forever to find them all. So probably not that one, but anyway, I'm open to suggestions. I don't know how many I'll be able to get done for December, but you know, we'll see. Um, that kind of takes us into 10% and really I don't have a lot of 10% this week other than to say Thanksgiving's tomorrow. If you celebrate Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving. I hope you enjoy your day, whether it's full of fun with friends and family, or if it's going to be a nice quiet day like mine will be just with me and my hubby. I hope you enjoy it. And, um, you know, I have been doing, oh, <laughs> I was gonna say, I've been doing hashtag 30 days of thankfulness, um, 30 days of Thanksgiving. I can't remember what I'm calling it on Instagram. I think I'm a couple days behind. I just realized that I've been doing really well at keeping up. I'll have to catch up today. <laughs> Oh, one other really quick thing that's sort of a 10%-y kind of thing before we get into shop news. I just remembered this as I stopped the recording. I told you guys we had a little salamander here in the house that we had kind of rescued from outside who in the end didn't actually need to be rescued, but we didn't know that. Um, I released Sally. Sally is now outside over here on the side of the house because it was really warm yesterday and it's warm again today and... I think it's going to kind of be warm tomorrow. I don't know. There was a stretch of warm days and I thought this is my opportunity to put poor Sally out there where she belongs or he, I don't know what it was. Um, so I made him a nice little nest of like fallen bark and everything near a tree stump. And, uh, I opened the thing and kind of laid it over and put him out there and he crawled down in. So hopefully he'll find a place to hold up for the winter. Um, I know they usually burrow. So hopefully he can burrow in quickly before, like I said, he's got a few days, but I just figured that's where he needs to be. He needs to be outside, but it was lovely having him here. So now I've got a container of crickets and a container of fruit flies, which let me tell you the flightless fruit flies, I don't care if they fly or not, they are gross. And then I bought a pineapple at the grocery store this week. <laughs> And it's sitting on the counter, and I realize it's sitting on the counter next to the jar of fruit flies, which now that seems really cruel because they're like, oh, I can smell it, but I can't get to it. <laughs> I need to, I need to get rid of all the critters. That's what Bill's like. So what are you doing with the crickets now? And I'm like, well, you know, I'm 
making stuffing in a couple of days. <laughs> it's extra protein. People eat crickets. I'm not going to put this. Don't worry. I'm not putting crickets in our stuffing. I promise I'm not. I'm not putting the fruit flies in it either. Everything is going to be let go outside soon because bugs. Okay, that was all I needed to add. Back to shop news now. <laughs> that takes us to shop news. And I don't have a ton of shop news other than I do want to say I am doing my annual Thanksgiving weekend sale this weekend. It will begin not on Thanksgiving, ironically. It'll start on Friday. So as of the stroke of midnight Friday, once you've finished all your Thanksgiving stuff and you're heading out for those Black Friday sales, which, oh my gosh, good luck to you if you do that. I don't do that. <laughs> but anyway, um, all the way Friday through Small Business Saturday, all the way through Cyber Monday. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Thanksgiving weekend sale. The code is Thanksgiving20. You can get 20% off anything that's in the shop in stock. So it's not good on custom orders, die to order stuff, or um, gift certificates. It doesn't count on gift certificates either. But anything else that's in the shop, you can take 20% off of. You can use the coupon as many times as you'd like over the weekend if you see something and then don't buy it the first time and want it again. I cannot guarantee that I will be able to combine shipping if you do make more than one order, only because from past experience, I this is usually a really heavily shopped weekend with this sale and I, it's hard for me to keep track, especially if I start shipping things out right as the orders come in. I can't guarantee that I'm gonna be able to get your order combined if you place a second one. So just be aware of that. Um, ordinarily, I try to do that for people, but I, I just can't make that promise right now. Um, let's see, what else? The November uh, Just Desserts Club shipment was due to go out by Saturday at the latest, because I always ship it the last week of the month. I'm going to apologize right now because I know it's not going to be ready to go out on Saturday. It should go out Monday though. I apologize for it being a couple days late. However, I had some hiccups with this particular um, club installment. Uh, first with my inspiration item that I was planning to, to use for the yarn and then um, with the actual baked good, which seems really silly, but that was the whole point of this particular club, was the inspiration was going to be on a dessert. I was making the dessert, then I was also sending you the recipe, and I was using the dessert that I make as my inspiration for the yarn. That all just got very murky this time, <laughs> and I had to switch things up sort of at the last minute. So that's why I'm a little behind. I apologize, but things will definitely be going out on Monday. So stay tuned. You'll be getting your club yarn. And it's the last shipment for this club. Um, I have ideas for other clubs, but obviously they're not going to be starting up till next year. So stay tuned for that. Um, my die to order stuff for those three new Christmas colorways, those are running on order, so on, those orders are running on time. So those should be going out um, within three weeks of the time that you placed your order. Um, I am planning to have at least one regular update in December. I'm just not sure exactly when, so stay tuned for that as well. <laughs> and at this point in the year, I'm still taking like special orders, custom orders and stuff, but any additional um, special orders that I take from this point through the rest of the year probably will not ship until January. Um, my normal turnaround time for custom orders is four to six weeks and I almost never take the full six weeks. Sometimes it goes to the four weeks, but at this time of the year with the holidays and so many other things going on, and me wanting to be able to take a bit of a break, it may very well take the six week period. Just please know that. So if you place a special order hoping to have something in time for Christmas, it's really, really unlikely that I'm gonna be able to do that for you. I can't say it won't happen, but I cannot promise that it will. I just wanna be very upfront about that right now. Um, that's about it. Our monthly makes is still going on through the end of the year. 
Um, as I said, I'll record next week a regular episode and announce the November winners for the monthly makes, and then we just have one month left. I can't wait to see who ends up on top of the Grand Grams champion. We have got two people vying for all their worth, <laughs> and I'm loving seeing everything that you both are making, and you know who you are. So I think that is everything I had to tell you. I'm trying to look through my notes here real fast. I'm pretty sure I told you again about the sale. The sale will be Friday through Monday this coming weekend. The coupon code is Thanksgiving20 for 20% 20 off any in-stock stuff in the shop. There's a lot of things in the shop, so hopefully you'll find something you love. And, oh, just to clarify, when I was talking about that 20 and 20 thing, that is something totally apart from my business. So you do not have to use Fiber Nymph Dye Works yarn for that. Like if you're using, gonna do the yarn thing or the patterns or whatever, nothing has to be Fiber Nymph Dye Works yarn. It can be, and if you do use Fiber Nymph Dye Works yarn, you can certainly double dip with the monthly makes, but it does not have to be Fiber Nymph Dye Works yarn. Just wanted to clarify, monthly makes does have to be Fiber Nymph Dye Works yarn. 20 and 20 does not. Okay, that's everything. I'm gonna go, because I've got a pie to bake, and I've got stuffing to put together, and I've got some yarn to dye in between there. <laughs> so, talk to you later. Have a lovely Thanksgiving. I'll see ya. I'll see you next week if the birds don't get me. I may just stay inside today. Could be dangerous out there. Bye. <laughs>